All right, so 2015 number three, it's a probability question. We have expected values, random variables. So go ahead and pause the video and read it if you haven't already. We'll get started with part A. Ta-da. All right, what is the probability? At least one of the ATM uh, is working when the mall opens. So looking at the chart we have here, at least one means one or more. So let's define a variable. Let's call this X. So let's let X equal the number of ATMs working when the mall opens. We want at least one ATM. So that means this one's good. That's at least one. Two is at least one. And three is at least one. So we just have to make sure we write this out very clearly so the, the graders know exactly what we're talking about. You can't just put an answer down. You got to show them how you got your answer. So the probability that X, which is the number of ATMs, is at least one, is the probability that X is greater than or equal to one. That is equal to, now we would just add these together, right? So we're gonna write that out, is equal to the probability that X equals one, plus the probability that X equals two, plus the probability that X equals three. So I'm communicating what I'm doing. Just don't add the numbers and put the answer down here. So after I substitute all the probabilities in, I get a final answer that the probability that X is greater than or equal to one is equal to 0.85. I think that's right when you add them all together. Boom, that's the end of part A. Part B, what is the expected value? And again, we have to focus on showing what we're doing and how we get our answer. So the expected value for random variable is when you multiply down each value by the probability and then you add those products. So multiply down and add across. So the expected value is a capital E of X, which we defined earlier, equals zero times 0.15 plus the rest of it. So I'm making sure I write down each of the variables and their probabilities. When you figure all of that out, plug it in the calculator, you should get about 1.73. Uh, machines. Don't forget the unit here. Perfect. That's part B. That's not too difficult. Part C. What is the probability that all of the ATMs are working when the mall opens given that? Okay, I love conditional probability. I don't know why, but this says given that at least one of the ATMs is working. We already figured out that probability, but what it's saying is what is the probability that we have a three if we know that we're only dealing with one through three? So we're really getting rid of the zero. We don't need that. Whenever you have a conditional probability and it says given that, and then whatever follows, that's what it's out of. So that's the denominator of your fraction. So let's practice writing this out. So we're asking for the probability that x is three given that x is greater than or equal to one. All right, so how do we figure that out again? We said it's the three divided by one and higher. So it's the probability that X equals three divided by the probability that X is greater than or equal to one. So in this, using our probability survey, we're just gonna plug it in. So 0 0.24 out of, here's our answer from above. And I believe we get for a final answer, the probability that X equals three, given that X is greater than or equal to one is approximately, what do we get? 0 0.8, 0 0.28. Two, there we go, had that written down. Okay, there's the answer for part C. Now, part D. Given that at least one ATM is working. So again, we're talking about, we're not gonna include this part here. Uh, would the expected value for the number of ATMs that are working be less than, equal to, or greater than the expected value for part B? Now here's the thing, if you Add down, if you, sorry, if you multiply down and add across, you're gonna get the same answer because there was a zero before. So you gotta think about this kind of this abstract, like remember our probability distributions always need to equal one when you add them up. The sum of all the events, the probabilities have to equal one. If you just get rid of the zero, it was a 0.15. So you can't just do that without adjusting these probabilities, but it's not asking us to do that. But I can see that students would go through and say, well, I'll just kind of mark this off and I'll find the expected value. And then it'll look like it's equal to. But in fact, these probabilities change because we're no longer out of 100%. So you need to, these will come up a little bit. And we don't need to get into that because it's not asking you to actually figure it out. It's just asking you to tell if it's less than, equal to, or greater than. 
So given that one machine is working, the expected value would be greater than the expected value calculated in part B by eliminating the lowest value, which is zero, the probabilities of the other values all increase proportionally. So the expected value must increase. Think of this like dropping the lowest grade in your class. Like if you have a class, you drop the lowest grade, your average goes up because that one was pulling you down. It's very similar to that. All right, that's pretty easy, right? 2015 number three. Good luck out there with the AP stats test, huh? Eh?